Hey everyone, this is Wobbly Wallaby. Magic Dragon Breath got buffed in the April 2024 patch. The skill cooldown and delay got adjusted from 5 seconds to 1 second, which is huge. Being able to spam Magic Dragon Breath is extremely important. Back then, people were using skill cooldown and delay items to try to decrease it at the cost of a lot of damage. And even when those were implemented, it was still considered too slow. Luckily, this buff made Magic Dragon Breath S tier, and I'll explain why in this video and show my complete build. Here, I take down the Legend Museum Dragon. It almost feels like I'm playing Ronin. Now that you can spam Magic Dragon Breath so quickly, it's very close to Light Slash. For these instances in this video, I'll be using 70% Deposit with 3368 Attack and 2839 Magic Attack. I tried other classes at 70% deposit and it didn't perform as well solo, so this build is quite usable, even for free to play and mid game deposits. Next, what makes this build unfair and worthy of being S tier? Magic Dragon Breath deals water damage and fire damage and has damage sources from its other Dragon Breath skills. There's plenty of multipliers as well. But it gets even better, with the Dark Dragon Flame Star Ruin, you can do dark elemental damage as well. This means you have 3 elements, so you don't have to worry about elemental disadvantage as much as other classes that are stuck to a certain element. Next, the Refined 15 Dragon Hell adds insane damage modifiers to your Dragon Breath, in particular the skill multiplier of 200%. To truly see the potential of this build, you need a Refined 15 Dragon Hell. Also, the tier 5 effect is insane. Having 30% ignore defense during the Death Awakening is great, although they translate this as Dead Rising. Although this only lasts for 30 seconds, it has a cooldown of 80 seconds, but this is nice if you lack ignore defense. But there's more. Where your magic dragon breath is busted is the demonic breath effect, where every 0.5 seconds you inflict 0.2 times demonic breath damage for 1.5 seconds. These three ticks are crucial for your damage. And again, the translations are a bit weird, this really is magic dragon breath. Instances like Legend Museum or Legend Isles has bosses that can't be one-shot and has damage caps per hit, so dealing damage per second, especially at a small interval, is extremely important. You'll end up having very high DPS because you're constantly damaging the target. Next, Sink or Swim is a busted skill that makes Ruin Masters and Ronin's S tier. Your magic defense will contribute to your magic attack, and if you use this in combination with the M Def Switch trick with Yimmers, then your damage will go up dramatically. For example, with my PvE build, without any buffs, I have 14,000 magic attack and 5,664 magic defense. With my PvE build, I cast Prepare for Elite, which has Synchro Swim in it. My magic attack is at 32,000. Next, I have my MDev set in my Yimmer slot and I switch to it. This one has around 12,000 magic defense. I cast Prepare for Elite then switch back to my PvE build. Now I have 55,000 magic attack, which is a big jump. Having magic defense switch gear is what changes this damage from A tier to S tier. Finally, Asphyxia is incredibly good for survivability as you have 8 seconds of invulnerability. If you know when to time it against bosses, you won't die and it will be great for soloing instances. Are you playing 8K games and want to run your game 24-7 without affecting your phone or computer's performance? Try UG Phone, a 24-7 cloud emulator with ultra-low latency. Here I'm playing Genshin Impact without needing to install more than 17GB on my phone. Then I click on my device's menu to bring up a variety of options and switch to my other device. Here's my Ragnarok mobile device, where I park my character in Void and other MVP spawning places and idle here all day. There are multiple servers in Asia and one for America. There are many plans available, so check them out. If you do sign up, then use the invitation code WOBBLY to immediately get a bonus of 488 diamonds. Here I use the code, then I can use diamonds to try it out for 4 hours for free. Diamonds can also be used to get discounts on paid plans like $1 off the 7 day plan. I'll put a link in the description, thanks to Yuchi Phone for sponsoring this video. Next, I'll show this build in action and give my tips and thoughts, and after, I'll show my complete build. First, I show myself killing the Legend Golem. I go to my MDef build in my Yimmers, then cast Prepare for Elite, then go back to my PvE build. I cast the Death Awakens, cast Magnum Break, then attack. 
It's great that I can deal water damage. Usually when I fight this as Ronin, this battle takes a bit longer. The golem goes down quickly, which is great. Here's a brief overview of my gear. I only swap out my accessory cards as needed. And here's my shadow equipment, oracle mirror, and relics too. Next is the sea spirit totem. I go to my MDEF build in Yumers, cast prepare for elite, then switch to my PV build. I cast a death awakens, cast magnum break, then attack. The damage here is great too. You can really see how well the tier 5 weapon effect is on the damage over time. You can also cast a Vis Arrival for some extra damage. If you feel like you're about to die, then cast Asphyxia for 8 seconds of invulnerability. Down goes the Sea Spear Totem, again, pretty smooth. I had previously recorded this run without MDEF Switch, and it is possible. So even without it, this build is strong. Next is Floor 3, which did take a few tries. I begin with the MDEF switch, then prepare for Elite, then go back to my PvE build. I cast Magnum Break. I burst him down quickly at the start. For Phase 2 it gets messy, I start to die so I cast Asphyxia. I try to target the orb but just end up auto attacking it to death. The heart does take a few hits to go down. For phase 3, I quickly end the switch before he comes. You get used to doing this in the heat of battle. The boss goes down, which is great. This floor is difficult without a saint to heal you or revive you. Next I'll show my attributes. I max Vit since every 10 Vit gives you 1% more breath damage, then Int because of MDEF switching, and then the remaining into Strength. I didn't invest in Dex because I already had 500 hit. Next here are my stats with MDEF switch. I have 22,000 attack, 55,000 magic attack, 64% penetration, 34.5% skill damage increase, 117.2% damage, 119.5% physical damage increase, 204.1% ignore defense. This is without the Death Awakens, as I don't rely on this for my ignore defense. Next, I have 136% fire damage and 75% water damage. Also, dark damage is at 20%. Next, I show how the pouring ice cube works well with the magic dragon breath. You can keep targets frozen for great crowd control, so this gacha also makes this build quite strong and you can use it to annoy people in PvP or keep things frozen in Oracle Dungeon or White Star Airship. Next, for New King, it does pretty well too. There's enough damage multipliers to allow you to one shot stuff as well, so you could potentially boss hunt with this as well. Next, I'll show my Museum Floor 2 footage since I already showed the dragon earlier in the video. Before this buff, I couldn't get this far and it was much tougher, so this buff really helped out this class. This is, again, a very tough battle, but this is where the survivability is really shown. The rock is super annoying to deal with, but luckily Asphyxia can survive through it. A 70% deposit and a class accessible to everyone, this is really an amazing class now. For those who miss Ronin, this is also a nice free to play alternative.
Thankfully, the boss goes down. Next are my advanced ruins. I think this build is ruin heavy, so I want to address this before the gear. That way, you can know whether you have some of the requirements. First is Death Cage Star Ruin. Ideally, you have a good second line so you can lifesteal while in Asphyxia state, but having nothing special is fine for this ruin too. And also, the third line is only for PvP. Next is the Berserk Breath Ruin. Ideally, you have a high first line and then a second line. The second line is very useful for dealing with mobs and bosses in White Star Airship. If you just care about legend instances, then the first line is the most important. This is the ruin that you need to roll the most for because you need some good stats here. Next is the Etched Mark Ruin. You need the third line and this gives a nice progressive damage boost. I wouldn't say that this is mandatory, but this is definitely one you should roll for. Next is the Darkness Awakening Star Ruin. I'd highly recommend a high first line for a longer duration. The third line is a nice to have. Again, this is a ruin that you probably want to roll good for because the high first line helps a lot for your damage. Next is the Dark Dragon Flame Star Ruin. A high first line is great. The second line is good for mobs and the third line is good for PvP. Finally is the Weapon Blocking Ruin. If you have the second line, you can use it. This is a ruin that fits, but it isn't necessary. I'd use the Anger Reflex Ruin for making Frenzy better, but I'd have to carve it to fit, so I didn't use it. Next for Arcane Ruins, White Blade Ruin is good for a boss killer, especially if there aren't any other enemies around. Next, the Ward Preparedness Ruin is great for giving you a self shield. This adds to some survivability. Next, the Transmission Ruin is great since Magic Dragon Breath is 7 meters range, so it will work at max range. Next are skills. Here are my Swordsman skills. Magnum Break can increase attack for 20%, which is a great temporary buff. Endure is also great for preventing flinching. Next are my Knight skills. The reason why Aura Blade has points in it is due to the Acer Monument. It gives 30 more attack per level of Aura Blade. The other properties are for auto attack. Next is Cavalry Master. This gives you damage to large monsters and small monsters. This allows you to do the double inside effect from Minoris and the Desert Wolf card, which gives you 100% ignore defense, which is quite busted. I lack morale and chance, so I take advantage of this, and you'll see this later with the cards I use. Next, here are my Lord Knight skills. Next are my Ruin Knight skills. For Dragon Breath, its damage goes up 20% when under HP light status, and you gain 1% per 10 bit, so it has some great damage modifiers. You also have 100% chance of burn. Next for Dragon's Water Breath, it's similarly influenced by HP light and vit. You also have 100% chance to freeze, which is great for crowd control. Next in my Prepare for Elite, I have Endure, Concentration, Lord's Aura, Heart of Steel, Sword Parry, HP light, and Sink or Swim. In my manual bar, I have Abyss Arrival, Magnum Break, The Death's Awaken, Asphyxia, Frenzy, and Prepare for Elite. For auto attack, I just have Magic Dragon Breath. Next is Gear. I don't have good morale and chance, so I went for the double inside build, as well as focusing on elemental damage increase. For offhand, I have the Dragon Bone Shield with the 18% physical damage increase random attribute. I use the Ancient Artifact User card for damaged MVPs. Next for armor, I use the other short patrol with the 20% elemental damage increase random attribute. 35% more water and fire damage is huge when you equip this. Note I only have morale 2 here, I wish it was a bit higher. For cards, I use the Poitata Star card for dealing with non demi humans. For garment, I use the leader's pauldron with 12% skill damage increase random attribute. For card, I use the Golden Flame King card for MVP damage. Next for foot gear, I use Fair Judgment with the 6% damage random attribute. I use the Familiar Star card for more magic attack. Next for my first accessory, I use the Heart of Molten Fire with 12% fire attack random attribute for more fire damage. 
Next for cards, it depends on what target I'm using. Here I use the Moonlight 10 trillion struck card for skill damage and damage to non demi humans. For my second accessory, I also kept the same thing. Also, I used the same accessories for my Ronin build just to get a closer comparison against these two classes. You can swap for water accessories if you'd like, especially if you struggle against the Legend Golem. Next for weapon, I use Dragon Howl. Make sure to get it to tier 5. Next for cards, I use the Drake Star card for damage to large monsters, and I use the Desert Wolf Star card to activate the Desert Wolf Inside effect. If you have enough morale and chance, then you don't actually need to do this. You can replace this with another Menorah Star card instead. Next for headwear, I use the Telep Baby for damage to large monsters. This will activate the Menorah's Deposit Inside effect as well. Next for card, I use the Machine Dragon Wing card for MVP damage. Next for face, I use the Cube Blower for damaged MVPs. Next for mouth, I use the Ocean's Attachment for MVP damage. Next for back, I use the Chicken Axe. This is the best in slot for back, especially if you're doing solo. Next for tail, I use It's Too Late for the skill damage. For my shadow equipment, I'm basically using a general set for physical damage users, which also includes ignore defense. Next for Oracle Mirror, I use the Bill for MVP damage. For my defensive Oracle Mirror, I use Cardo for the M def. Next for Relic, I use Lord of Vane, primarily for the elemental counter coefficient. Next is my M def gear. For offhand, I use the Marine Soul Bulwark for the 10% M def, and I have the 36% M def random attribute. For card, I use the Tomb Zombie for the M Death. Next for armor, I use the Other Shore Patrol for the 15% M Death and have the 24% M Death random attribute. For card, I use the Rock Spirit Turtle card for the M Death. Next for garment, I use the Imperial Nice Cape for the 24% M Death random attribute. Next for card, I use the Willow Star card for the M Death. Next for footgear, I use Gobin's Grieve for the M Death, and I use the Fawn card for the Int. Next for accessories, I use the Diamond Earring with the 12% M Death random attribute. I use the Quiff card for the M Death. For my next accessory, I use the Void Crystal for the 12% M Death random attribute. I also use the Quiff card for the M Death. Next for my weapon, I use the Dragon Howl. I equip two Sting Star cards for the M Death. Next for headwear, I use the Gloomy Witch's headwear for the M-Def. I use the Gibbet card for the M-Def. Next for face, I use the Nightmare Ghost face for the M-Def. Next for mouth, I use the Night Before Assessment for the M-Def. Next for back, I use Fantasy Pouring Ferris Wheel for the M-Def. Next for tail, I use the M-Def Fairy, also for M-Def. With all these gears in place, I show my M-Def is at 12,997. This will result in a huge boost in magic attack. Next for food, I use 6 stacks of Pontera Royal Salad. Then I use Strength B, Int B, Fit B, Fire Mastery Alloy, and Slow Attack Alloy. Next are my final thoughts. I think the devs brought this build back to life with the recent buffs. I think this class is really strong and fun to play, especially if you don't want to invest in the auto attack rune master. Also, if you didn't get Ronin back when it was released, you can kind of experience what it feels like. It's definitely pretty close, but of course Ronin is still a bit more powerful. Next, this class scales very well with higher deposits. Normally, when I have a higher 30% deposit, my magic attack can go up to 85,000, which is insane. You will melt bosses like crazy, and this is because of Synchro Swim and the Yumer Switch. I do believe the Magic Dragon Breath build is now S tier, and what are your thoughts? Are you going to try it out? Let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Here's a video that I would recommend, and if you want more Ruined Master videos, check out this playlist over here.